All right, last week's video, I showed you how to construct the shelf. This week, we'll start doing the exterior finishing. Um, I have gone through and just did a, a, a light fill on some of the tabs. It's not really important to fill the tabs with the exterior finishes I'm using today. We'll start with the front wall. I've already pre-painted it and glued. Because of the finish I'm going to put on the exterior, the treatment, I want the window frames all installed before I start. So I've done that and I've put a fairly decent coat of paint on it. Now, when I'm doing an exterior of a miniature house or any kind of miniature like building work, I don't use craft paint. In this one, I'm using this American Accents. This is from the regular hardware store. It's um, a satin finish, which is one of the big advantages. There's a lot more pigment in this than there is in, say, a craft paint like this. And it won't need a finish coat. This is a satin finish, so I don't need to do it. You can even use this if you're just painting like dollhouse siding. One of the goals I have for this particular project is to show you guys how to do things without having to go to a miniature store. So I'm going to show one of many types of faux stucco finish on the front side of this. Let me get my stuff together and I'll show you how to do it. All right, I've opened my paint up and stirred it. I have a latex glove on one hand because I don't want to have to wash paint off my hands. I have other things to do today. This is a stucco finish. It's, it's a faux stucco finish. It's I saw this in a magazine article many, many years ago, just a mention that the person that had made a certain building in an article had done this, but it didn't tell how. So I kind of played with it, and this is how I figured out. So I've got... I think I've got two or three coats of paint. I wanted to get it, the wood covered pretty well, but I didn't worry about filling in holes or anything. Now I'm going to put on a, some paint. I'm brushing on some paint. And now, the part that gets a little bit messy, Just this is just regular, like Kleenex tissues. I'm going to tear off some and I'm going to put it down on the paint and I'm going to put more paint on top of it. Now you need to cover, you want this to be wrinkly, but it gives, it's not really a stucco, but I don't know what you would call it. It's just a really cool finish and since this building is I, I think I've mentioned it. it's going to be a toy store because I've been collecting stuff for a toy store for many years and I decided that's what this is going to be. Um, and I'm going to bend it around the sides because my side finish will cover the edge of it when it comes around. But just continue like that. You can make it really wrinkly or just a little wrinkly depending on the texture and the effect you want. I'm making a pretty generous coat of tissue in here. But you can see it's covering up that seam. Hopefully you can see that on the camera that it's it really is covering this seam. I didn't really fill that too much. I just painted it. And because stucco is usually put on, I wanted this finish to look like it was up into the frame of the window a little bit. But that's all there is to this particular finish, is just painting a little bit. And it kind of, the, the paint is kind of acting like a glue underneath. I usually make sure I have a good coat of paint. I find it, it works out better if I have a really good coat of paint underneath the tissue. It may not be as necess that necessary, but for me it works better. And you can put a really light coat and just make a little wrinkly, or you can put on gobs of tissue. You're the artist. I'm going to do a different finish 
on the sides. So that I'll show you that. That'll come up here in a few minutes. But try to keep your paint off of your wood trim. That is one disadvantage to doing putting the wood trim in. But I didn't want to have the wood trim sitting on top of this particular finish. And I'm not going to put any in here. I haven't decided if I'm going to leave this plain or if I'm going to put something fun in there. I'll figure that out here. Sometime before I get the whole project done, I'll figure out what's going to go in those little boxes. They do have a, a very light scoring in the on the wood as they come. And I might just leave it that way or I might do something different there. We'll see. But I'm going to turn the camera off and continue working on this and I'll be back to check with you and let you check in on what I'm doing. So now this is all finished and ready to go. I'm I've got some edges to trim and I'll and I've got I need to do some touch up on my paint. But I want to move on to the sides now. So for the side, I'm actually going to do a faux stonework. And it's a little bit different than some of the others. There's lots of ways to do faux stonework. First thing, since there is no roof on here, and I don't want to take a chance on breaking this, I'm going to put a brace in here. It's just a coffee can and a stack of empty pet food containers. Just something so this has some support under it. And now we're going to have some fun. Now this is going to be really messy. So I need a spreader and I need a wet wipe. Always have wet wipes. Now I've started on this um, bottom corner. I don't know if you can see that very well. I can't really see that very much. So I'm going to start here and share with you how we're doing this. It's a little different. I, um, I know there's a couple of people have instructions for this online. And um, I've seen several different sources for this. It's, it's a fun one, it's easy, and it's pretty much free materials, except for the glue. Now, you do need lots of tacky glue. And I really recommend just a regular weight tacky. Um, I've done it with just plain white glue, and it, it just really isn't thick enough to do this. Now one thing I did do, I've got a very faint line drawn on my tab because I don't want to go past the part of the tab that's going to go into the roof. Because now that I have glue spread, I'm going to get my special secret stone making. It's an eggshell. Um, the only secret to this is you, when you use some eggs, you clean the shells out, and this one's got just a little bit of, there'll be a white membrane inside of there. And try and get as much of the white membrane out as you can, because if you glue the membrane on, and there's very much, the eggshell will actually come off later. But what we need to do is just put this on top of our glue, and kind of push down, and let it break. It's going to break into little pieces. It's kind of like doing a puzzle. You just cover this glue now. And after I get this part done, this section, I'll glue another section. You can come back to this. You can, you know, work for a while and you get bored. Put it away for a while. Just make sure that you cover all the glue you've spread out. It's the only real rule. And after this is all covered, um, I know this is probably really exciting watching me crack eggshells on here. Um, after this is all covered in eggshells, then we'll be doing a couple more steps. But it really will turn out to look like stonework. I've used this on two or three different projects at least over the years, and it's kind of fun. It's you don't really have to think when you do this. It's good when you're when you have things you need to think about. You just kind of do eggshells. That's all there is to this step. And see how I'm pushing down? The harder you push, the smaller your little pieces will be. Um, and it's going to take a lot of eggshell to cover. I've got a whole dish of eggshells over here. 
Uh, this is, but this is why you want the tacky glue and not the white glue. Is you, you do need the glue to, to have enough body to hold on to your shells. And keep wet wipes because your fingers will get really sticky and you'll find yourself pu actually pulling the eggshells off rather than having them stick to the glue. But after I get this side done, I'll come back and I'll show you what we do next. All right, as you can see, I now have the entire wall pretty much covered in eggshells. It took a lot of eggshells and it took a couple of days. I just worked on it when I had time. Now around the edges, I've done it on some edges, but the ones that stick off, it's kind of fun. All you have to do is just run your thumb down around, break off anything that is sticking past the edge where you want it to go. And now we need to add some color. And this is pretty simple. I've got two containers of water. I've got a little, just a little bit of water here and more water in this container. And I've got a ceramic tile that I just put a couple, of, I've got two greens and four grays and a couple, three browns and a terracotta and a um, golden yellow or golden, golden brown actually. And just colors that you would find in nature. You don't want, because we're going to color our brick, our stones now. So get your brush really wet. You want a couple of soft brushes. I've got a kind of a medium sized one. And I've got another really small one. I don't know if I'll use this one or not. I haven't decided. So I've got this really, really wet. And let's start with a little brown. And get your paint pretty well watered down. And just hit a couple of stones here and there. And you can come back and forth through your colors. We're not going to hit all of them with this. Now, really important, do your first rinse in this water. Then get it really wet. Let's get a little green. You see, I'm just kind of touching some color. And once again, rinse it off. Uh, you can, it, mine, I'm using all different colors. Uh, if you're trying to set your building to be a certain area, certain geographic area, then you might want to study what color rocks are where it comes from. But I figure mine, it's kind of partially fantasy, so I don't care. I'm just making it fun. I suppose you could even make it not nature colors. You could, you know, really go to town with this and have fun with it. But as you see, I'm just going to touch paint onto some of the rocks. And when I get this, this step done, I'll be right back. All right, so I've just kind of used those colors to spot paint different areas. And then I took all the leftover little bits of paint that were on that tray, and I put it in here, in this little bit of water. And now I'm going to do what's called a dirty water wash. Kind of over my paint. Like I said, my those spots are pretty much dry. I want to cover all the white. We don't want this to look like white eggshells. And this will dry a little lighter than it looks now. So I may have to come back and put on a second coat. And like I'm finding a few eggshells that are loose that are just kind of brushing off as I do this. And like this part of the paint wasn't quite dry, so it kind of took away a little bit of it, but it left this color. And if you want your dirty water wash, like this is mine's a little bit on the yellow side, but that's okay. I kind of like that. If you want it more gray, squirt a little extra gray paint in it. If you want it more brown or more whatever color, add those colors to the jar of paint. If you think it's going on too thick, too much color, add water to this. And I put this in a jar with a lid on it because I don't have the other side of this building isn't ready to, to do this with. So I won't waste all this. I'll just get out a little more of the paints when I get that side ready to do and do the, the spots. If you let it dry more than I did, you won't brush off quite as much of your base colors there, but it doesn't matter. But as you can see, this is really simple. And there's no science to this. You're the artist. You do what you want. And don't worry, we're not trying to paint the plywood behind. That's not the idea of this step. 
We're actually going to cover that here in a little bit. We have a couple of steps yet. And then we'll cover that. All right, well, that's how fast it is to put this wash on. I'm going to go clean my brush and let this dry. And when I think I've got enough of this, I'll come back and we'll seal this and then we'll grout it. And then we're actually going to use another version of this to paint the grout too. So hang on, we'll be back in a sec. Okay, now you can see I've got the dirty water wash all over. It actually only took one coat. I, I like these colors. I think it looks nice. So now we need to seal this. The first time I did this technique, I didn't seal it after this step. And when I grouted it, after I took all that time to get my color on, it all came off. So I learned my lesson. We seal. What I use is just Mod Podge. I use a lot of Mod Podge. This is satin, which I'm going to use on here. We're going to use gloss when we get to the inside of the house. This is a great product, and it's not very expensive. I have several bottles in different sheens, and all you do, I'm using the same sash brush that I painted the primer on with, and we're just painting this on. We want to make sure we coat the whole thing, and remember, this is just going to protect our paint that we put on the eggshells, not anything, not do anything else right now. The jar is just a little too narrow for my brush. You see, this goes really fast. The, really, the only part of this technique that takes very much time is putting the eggshells on. That took quite a while, but it's I think it's worth it, and it's certainly an inexpensive technique, so I think it makes up for it. And I love how it looks when it's done. If you um, want to see another place that I've used this, if you um, follow the link to my website down in the description box, and in my pictures, I have a picture of a gazebo I think I called it a gazebo that I did that has this technique on the floor and it looks I love how it turned out and if you're not familiar with Mod Podge it's been out oh gosh forever like probably 40 or 50 years and it's it was used to do like kind of an easy version of decoupage we used to paint this on and use it to put paper and make pictures. But I use Mod Podge all the time in my miniature work and um, it's just really a nice product to keep on hand. So that's it. This is all coated. Now when this dries we will get to do our next step which is grouting which is fun. It's really messy. So I have to let this dry and I'll be right back. Right. So the uh, Mod Podge is all dry. Uh, it, it, you're going to lose a little bit of our finish. That's okay. Uh, it's time to grout. And I'm just using this. It's called Unsanded Wall Grout. It's used in real tiling. I just got this at like the hardware store like Home Depot or Lowe's or someplace like that. And you mix it up. Use all disposable stuff when you're doing this because this stuff will clog your pipes if you try to run it down the sink or clean your equipment up. So I choose something I can throw away. And we're just going to spread it. And this is a little thin. It's kind of like thin frosting or pancake batter. It's kind of that consistency. And we're just going to spread it on. And don't worry, you are going to lose, even though we put the clear finish on, we're going to lose some of our paint that we put on earlier. And that's okay, we, just so we don't lose very much of it. And I did some earlier so that you can see what it looks like when it comes off. So you just coat it like this and then you let it set and kind of check the corners so you can see when it's ready when it gets, whoops, there's some running down the front. And when it gets, it kind of starts to dry up, look at this little pit. Now just a barely damp sponge and just kind of wipe it. You just want to wipe it off the surface of your rocks and yet we're going to lose some of that color we put on but 
not as much as if we wouldn't have sealed it. And we're gonna kind of just kind of you want to leave it so it covers up the wood and kind of seals the the rocks down. And we might have to do a couple of coats because I got a little too thin, but that's all there is to that. And when I get this all grouted and wiped, I'll come back and show you what the next step is. All right, so now we have, I've actually re-grouted this again because I had to make my grout thicker than I had earlier. Now we're just gonna wipe it off. And we'll leave the stones. So you can kind of see the stones. You don't see a lot of them. Great. Sorry about that. But I'm going to wipe this off. And when this gets all the way dry, I'll be back. And we'll do a color wash on this. But you see, it, just wipe it enough that you see. There. Grout is ready to go. We'll paint. We'll do a color wash in just a few so minutes. Now the grout is complete, it's pretty much dry. Maybe not completely. We're going to take the same wash that we used earlier on the rocks. And we're just building up layers of color this way. And we're just going to brush this on. And this time, we are, we want to make sure that we cover all the white. And this might take a couple of coats. It's okay to make multiple coats. And if I feel like it's gotten too dark, I can always go back and highlight some of my rocks. I might go back and touch up some rocks that lost their color. I'll see how I like it when I get done. But this will dry quite a bit lighter because the, the white is going to absorb a lot of color. So when I get this washed and the color I want it, We'll come back and we'll do a final sealing of the siding. All right, I've done the dirty water wash, and I actually went back and did a couple more washes, one with a, a really thin down green watery wash and one with a brown and, and again another little bit with a gray, just to give more depth. Really work on this step because you can't really see too much, but you can see a little bit of the colors. There's layers of colors. And once it gets shiny, they'll show up more. So now we're going to put a coat on. Now this needs to be sealed. So once again, we're using the Mod Podge in the satin finish. And I'm using my sash brush again because it just, it's easier to use the sash brush for this, this because we're putting on, we can just cover it really quick. Actually, I'm just going to spread some out on there rather than trying to dip in each time. Because we want a pretty good coat now. This wants to be coated pretty thoroughly. I'm actually just going to pour some out and spread it. So you can see, I don't know if you can see or not on camera, this is pretty thick stuff. So, And really direction on this particular project. In fact, I try to brush all directions when I'm doing this because in case there's any brush marks, I want them to be random. I don't kind of think like an oil painting. You want your brush marks to be all different directions, not up and down or side to side, really. And really flood it on. Now, I'll make a decision when I get done, when this dries, if it needs another coat. I'll just, I might put another coat on just so that I have a good sealed finish. This got a satin finish to it, and I need to do the other side of the building the same way. And then, next video, we will put the front roof on, and we'll start the electrical wiring. So I'll talk to you next week. Bye.